to the box of textures. Right now, we have one sequencer going, but uh, in a sense, that is not the point of today's exercise. So let us dive in and take a look. I've set up a couple of buttons here. Uh, reset resets both sequencers to the beginning, to the first step, and I have a start stop button. Uh, the start stop button is, uh, well, we'll get to that. Everything is Moog standard, so to speak. Uh, the only exception is this button panel, and I've just used that to supply a voltage to this voltage-controlled oscillator, uh, to this voltage-controlled amplifier, and we will get to that shortly. Uh, but everything else is, well, I do have a scope, which is also not Moog standard, but uh, we'll leave it at that. All the sound generation and signal generation and uh, timing generation components are all VM900 series modules from Voltage Modular by Cherry Audio. So let's take a look at this. Uh, when we press start stop, which is the same as this button, we are supplying a voltage, a steady voltage, to this voltage controlled amplifier. And what's going through the voltage controlled amplifier, here's the input. So, normally uh, with a 960 sequential controller, hereafter known as a sequencer, you normally have a clock, uh, what Moog called an oscillator. So you would turn that on and the lights would go and the st it would follow the steps and you would turn the oscillator off and you would click the set button to make it go to a particular step. I've given that function, the set button to this button here, reset. Uh, however, in a previous video, I was, well, not complaining, but I was uh, saddened, shall we say, that there was no clock input on uh, the Moog 960s, the sequencers. So you couldn't do fancy tricks to make uh, send in a clock and then use clock dividers and uh, all that sort of thing to make polyrhythms or uh, under chaos, as some might call it. But uh, just idly not thinking about it for a moment, well, for a week or two, it occurred to me that there was a way that you could do a pseudo clock and a pseudo clock divider. Uh, I had a fit of inspiration, but uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. So let's take a look at this. Uh, instead of using the internal oscillator in the sequencer, what I've done is I've hooked up the output of this 921 voltage controlled oscillator. I've used the rectangle and, uh, whoops, the rectangle width, I've made it very narrow. It's 13%. And you can see it here. So here's the output that's going to the input of the VCA, but I've also sent it to the top row of the scope. So you can see the pulses and essentially that acts as a clock signal. And by varying the frequency, let's see, it's 3.55. So by varying the frequency, you can slow down or speed up the clock. So, hang on, let's set that back to where I was, 3.55. So anyway, uh, we have the voltage controlled oscillator acting as a clock. So we need a clock input and there isn't really a clock input on the Moog sequencers, 
But what there is, is a shift input. And every time the shift input gets a pulse, if you refer to the previous video, the shift input getting a pulse moves the sequencer to the next step. So if you send a series of pulses, the sequencer goes through the steps and gives you an output. And the output you can see here uh, is going to a voltage controlled oscillator. And we're taking a sawtooth wave out, sending that to a VCA, sending that to a mixer, and sending the mixer to the output of the main output of voltage modular so you can hear it. So, so far, very simple. Uh, the only change we've made is instead of using the sequencer's own oscillator to clock it, we're now using a an external VCO. So let us press the start stop button. And in time with each of these pulses coming out of the VCO, going into the shift input of the sequencer, that is causing the sequencer to advance a step every time it gets a, a clock. So that's part A. Uh, so far, nothing outrageously different. Uh, one thing that you may notice is I'm only seeing the first three steps of the sequence. What we're doing is we're taking the output of step four and sending that to the input of step one. So what that means is every time the sequencer says bang, go to step four, it says nope, really go to step one. So we can change this. Let's move that to step six, which means that as soon as it hits step six, it says, nope, goes back to step one. So we never get to six. So now we have a five step sequence. If I pull this, you can see that the sequence plays through all eight notes. Now I'll put it in step seven and it will never get there because when it hits step seven, it nopes out and goes automatically to step one. So I'm going to put this back. So that is why we are seeing three steps. And uh, what I've done is this row, I've set the first note to a voltage and the all the other notes to a lower voltage. And I've sent that out to this VCO. So that way we can hear exactly what this sequencer is doing. And that is channel one in the mixer. So if we turn that down, we will no longer hear the first sequencer and the first oscillator. So let's take a look at sequencer number two. Uh, it's exactly the same setup uh, with, you know, perhaps a minor difference. Uh, we have the same clock input, so to speak, coming out of the VCA, which is coming out of the VCO. And we are seeing five steps. So same thing. We can make that longer. Uh, I have neglected my duty. There we go. So I used different notes on this sequencer so you could tell it apart from sequencer number one. So uh, same setup. Uh, I'll go back to five notes. Whoops, missed it. So that's five notes and we have that going uh, the output of the sequencer going to the input of a different VCO. Have the sawtooth output of the VCO going to uh, a VCA. Have that going to channel two of the mixer. And that same output goes to the main outs of voltage modular. Uh, let's go take a step back for a moment. Uh, this pulse is going to the VCA and that output of the VCA is driving both of the shift inputs, but it's also driving these two gate inputs of uh, the two 
envelope generator. So this section is essentially uh, one synth voice being every time there's a pulse from the clock oscillator, uh, so to speak, you get a note. And it's the same thing with these three modules. That is what you're hearing for coming out of Sequencer 2. So uh, what we're seeing is that both sequencers are being externally clocked. So there's nothing common to them. There's no connection between the two sequencers, but they're all being driven from the same clock. And that is uh, kind of half the battle is because there's no clock inputs, you can't have a master clock. Uh, except there is a way to do it by using these shift inputs. So that's the basics. Uh, let me turn up the output of sequencer one. So what you're hearing is three steps from sequencer one and five steps from sequencer two. And that's perfectly good. So we're taking this voltage, this oscillator's frequency, and using that as the clock. And we're using three steps here and five steps here, both going at the same speed because it's the same clock. Now, here's the tricky part. We'll go back to just sequencer one. What I have done with sequencer one is that is just the first row of knobs. So we're sending out three voltages, although you could send out up to eight. And I'm using this quantized output, although I could use the unquantized output. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's easier to use the quantized output if you're using notes, but it's still a voltage, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, row two, however, I'm using the unquantized voltage and I'm sending the first note is all the way up two volts and all the other notes are at zero volts. So essentially when note one sounds, the voltage goes high coming out of this row. And what do we do with that? Well, let's take a look. We're sending that. So let me slow down. We're sending that voltage to another synth voice, in a sense, down here in the third row. So you can see the red spikes are what's coming out of the oscillator, which is the clock, air quotes. The green are the pulses coming out of row B of sequencer one. And let us give that a listen. So every green pulse here, we're getting one note out of this synth voice. So essentially, we've divided this clock into three. Let's turn that down and let's give a listen. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. So this is sequencer A, uh, sorry, sequencer two, and it has five steps, but I've done the same thing. You can see sequencer two, because it's five steps, it hits that first step not as frequently. So for Three, every three steps of the clock oscillator, again, air quotes, which you can't see because I'm not on camera, every three clocks, we get a pulse out of sequencer one, but we get a pulse out of sequencer two after only every five clocks. So we've divided the clock by five using this sequencer. And here we have a handy other synth voice. It's exactly the same as this one. It's just a different note, so let's turn the volume up on that.
And here are the two extra synth voices. So right now we have four different pulsing screen. Let me try that sentence again. Right now we have four different pulsing schemes, not screams. So I don't know what the clock speed is. That's one disadvantage of not having a digital clock module. You could set the exact clock speed, uh, but it's essentially the same thing here with the uh, VM900 modules. But I, I just can't say, okay, give me uh, 60 beats per minute. So it doesn't matter, but I just wanted to mention that. Uh, that is the beauty of doing all this synth programming in the analog world, I guess. Uh, so let us... I'm going to turn everything on. It's uh, mildly cacophonous, but that is half the fun, one might say. So here is the master clock oscillator. And you can see the pulses here. And we're getting three pulses out of sequencer one, five out of sequencer two. But the second row of each sequencer, we're dividing those clocks. This is one out of three. This is one out of five. And we can change those. Let's make this four steps instead of five. So those are both uneven numbers, but what if we made this six steps? Essentially, we have a master clock here, and then, uh, well, I might have it the other way around. Let's say this is our six-step master clock. And this is clocked at half the speed. So we've essentially made a one to two clock divider all using analog sequencers. So uh, now we're going seven to three. Or if I pull it completely, we're going eight to three. Darn, I should have uh, got that last note synced up correctly. So let's go back. There we go. That must have been just at the quantization threshold. So point 0.92 is a half step down and point 0.93 is a half step up. But let's go back to five steps. So here we are. Sequencer one, three steps. Sequencer two, five steps. And what we end up with is clock divisions, basically five to three. This is six to three or two to one. So, congratulations everyone. We have succeeded in using only Moog analog modules to make a master clock and a clock divider using two sequencers. And uh, I made a Moog 55 cabinet module set and uh, that has one sequencer in the 55 cabinet, but I made the sequencer B complement. Uh, hopefully I've gotten that long, complicated name right. So that gives you two sequencers, two sequencers up at the top uh, in the extra cabinet. So you have a total of three sequencers. So uh, given that, you can do add another layer and have a whole extra clocking scheme. So you could have one sequencer doing two steps, 
one sequencer doing four, and the third one doing eight, so you've successfully made varying clock divisions. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I had a great time doing this. It kind of just hit me that it was possible. But uh, I have to say, in the real world, you're probably better off going out and buying a clock module and a clock divider because this has to be the world's most expensive hardware clock divider uh, if you were to do it in an actual physical Moog modular. But it is possible to do. And uh, I was happy I was able to get this thing working. So, uh, thank you, and, uh, like, subscribe, sign up for my Patreon. I will post this patch there. Uh, Patreon subscribers can download, well, I was going to say all my patches, but I haven't quite gotten that far yet. Uh, again, thank you for listening, and...